Marina Fokidis, she will introduce also our guest speaker. Uh, so, Marina Fokidis is a curator and writer based in London. Please pronounce me. She was appointed head of the Adventure Club of London. She was an advisor for Document 14. Founder of the Kunsthalle Athena and founding director and editor in chief of House of State of Mind and Architecture magazine. In 2011, Fokidis was one of the curators. She was also a commissioner of the radio of the Swiss Commission. Mm -hmm. One of the co curators of the Tirana in 2001. Yeah. She was an adjunct curator at the Arts Base of the Morgan and the Cross Foundation. She curated the We can't hear them. They're <laughs> Uh, works by slaves and Tata okay. And I guess I leave it here. She is a well-known curator and writer. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you, Marina, for being here. With thank us. you, thank you, thank you for being here. Well, now you're gonna be quiet, and uh, and thank you so much, Sophie, and thank you for coming. And thank you for inviting me in the program Horizon, so Horizon of Possibilities. It is actually um, a big honor to be part of your program and a big honor to be able to extend this invitation to colleagues and friends. Uh, and so here we are, reoccupying a castle together with you under the shadow of uh, even the upper castle of the Alps and under the shadow of empires and under the shadow of patriarchies and, under, and so forth. And trying to reconfigure one way or another through the power of, um, uh, let's say, queer uh, capacities that can drive us beyond the normal, even can drive us beyond the restrictions of the normal, new, many possibilities. Um, we, are, we are broadcasting, as Sophie said, from the International uh, Academy of Salzburg, from Salzburg, yeah. and mainly precisely from the George Brackle House. Uh, where, as you know, most of you know that in one of these apartments, the notorious and very famous Austrian uh, poet George Strackel lived. Yes. That's important, you know, because locality sometimes is important. Okay. And yeah. on the clouds with us is Beth Stevens and Annie Sprinkle. So, hello. Hi. I will give, Hi. You, I will give you a very short and then I give it to you. Um, Beth, now I have to read a bit so I don't make a mistake. Beth Stevens is a filmmaker, an artist, and a professor in the art department of the University of California in Santa Cruz. And Annie Sprinkle is an internationally known multimedia artist and a pivotal member of the 80s sex, po uh, sex positive feminist movement. They have collaborated since the 2002, and together they co founded the Ecosexual. Um, movement where one can approach the ecological issue or the environmental issue with a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, fun and sexual way. Uh, I met them in Documenta 14, where under the suggestion of uh, philosopher and curator Paul Preciado, they were invited as uh, official artists and they premiered their film, Water Makes Us Wet. And by the way, you can see this film now for free for some days in their website. Today, they're going to guide us through this ecosexual eco position of making the earth a lover. So please, employ your attention, your love, and your love to follow their name. Annie, Beth, hello on you. Hi. Hi, I'm Annie. And I'm Beth, and we're so glad to be here. We're really happy to see you all and um, make love to the earth today. We're here in Hollywood, California, where we're, it's our first stop on a cross country road trip across the United States and back. And this right here is my brother's uh, recording studio. And we had to come in here. He does music, he's a composer. We had to come in here because the gardeners were getting the yard ready for our eco-sexual wedding, which we're going to do 
at the end of our talk. Of our talk. So should we go outside? Yeah, so the, I think the gardeners have finished. They were making a lot of noise. <laughs> so we started here and together, uh, hopefully you can hear us. Can it, is our sound all right? Can someone say in the chat if you can hear us? Oh, good. Okay, super, super. Okay, so we're gonna go outside and we're gonna have some eco-sexual fun with you. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably start with a little- um, History. History, how we history. got together, and then a little bit about ecosexuality as we imagine it. Then we're going to show you some ecosexual embodied techniques. Yes, yeah. we are going to make love with the earth. And then at the end, if any of you want to, you can choose to marry the earth today in a little Zoom ecosexual wedding. Um, it's kind of fun. Otherwise, you can just be a witness today. No pressure. Or you can object to the wedding also. Yeah. If you don't like weddings, you can object. And we love the chat if you're able to access it and or ask questions along the way. Um, while we're screen sharing, we can't see your questions, but someone hopefully will read them. Okay. And uh, yeah. Let's Here begin. we go. So um, let's take it outside. Okay, it sounds quiet. The weed whacker and the uh, air leaf blower were making some noise. By the way, this house uh, was where they filmed the movie Chinatown, partly with Jack Nicholson. So it's a been a movie set over the years. Here's the beautiful yard. And there's some very eco sexy flowers and plants and boobies. Okay. Here you're here, Beth. Oh, I know. Okay. I think so. Okay. Actually, we'll get set up and then we can share the screen. Share screen. I think maybe it's better low. It's very sunny here, so we've got some sun play happening. That's yes. an eco-sexual We probably need condition. our sunglasses. Yes, we're having a little sun play. <laughs> the, the rays of the sun are penetrating our pores of our skin right now. It's very hot. <laughs> it is. And here's our, our brother's dog, uh, Jack. Jack. Hey, Jack. Jack, come say hi. Okay. So I think... Uh, we're ready to begin if there's no objections. <laughs> Let's. So we want to share the screen. I know. I think they're going to do it, right? Are we doing no, it? No, they're going to unshare it. Oh, okay. Play. So this is our classic beginning of our talk, Assuming the Ecosexual Position, which is also the name of our new book. And here we are in the Garden of Eden playing. Ecosexuals like to play, and we think play is very important. And you can have ecosex anywhere, anytime. So um, it's a conceptual art piece, actually, and uh, uh, as far as we see it, but it's many things. Um, we'll start at where Beth and I met, this beautiful dream come true relationship for both of us, a miracle happened. When I was in school, when I was getting my graduate degree, I had met Annie through her famous tit prints. You can sort of see her tits here. And uh, she has very famous, you know, boobs. <laughs> Anyhow, I became enamored with her, and so I asked her if she would pose for a, a photo shoot for me later on, and that was really how we got to know each other. So this is one of the images from the photo shoot. It was called Who's Zooming Who, and it was about the lesbian gays. 
I was in the sex industry making porn movies and, and doing all kinds of sex work at the time. And But I really kind of wanted to do more art projects. So when Beth called me, I... I thought that would be nice to do a, a photo shoot with a real artist. Although I knew artists, my boyfriend had been a Fluxus artist. I had many boyfriends, many sex partners. But around that time, I was starting to get interested in women. And Beth always loved tool girl, pinup girls. Uh oh. Next slide. Oh, shoot. You are screen sharing. Okay, let's see. Somehow our, our slides are not going forward. Darn it. Of course let's it works see. on the tech. I think it Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to escape for a second, I think. I'm I apologize. Well now okay, my computer's frozen. Could we stop the screen share for a minute? What just happened? Uh, oh, there we go. There's the next one. Okay, great. So this was uh, a few, 10 years later, a decade later, after that photo shoot, we both found ourselves in California. I had gotten a professorship at UCSC and Annie had moved out to be closer to her family. Can you see these slides? Uh oh, are we even connected? Hello, hello. Hello. Uh -oh, the tech same. might have happened. Hello. Just uh, a matter of uh, Simone or you. Should Let me share this. I'm going to share the screen again. Okay. Okay. Sharing the screen. I think we're going to have to maybe do it like this. Then well, let's see. Videos. Let's see. So. Um, so anyhow, we had a domestic partner ceremony where we became legal domestic partners. Because marriage, uh, same-sex couples uh, weren't allowed to get legally married. This is 19 years ago. And uh, we basically did it so I would get health insurance because <laughs> as a freelance artist, um, I didn't have you know certain benefits that married couples have. So we, we did this also as a kind of form of protest against the war in Afghanistan. And this was where we learned that, um, that love could be content for art. So after this, we, we began a project called the Love Art Laboratory. And this is um, a seven year project that we did where we decided we had done a lot of work about sex, both of us. There goes an airplane, sorry. <laughs> um, we'd done a lot of work about sex, but what was this thing called love? And how could we generate love in the world? The seven year structure came from a performance Linda Montano did called Seven Years of Living Art. And she invited other artists to use her structure where every year was based on the the a different theme and color. So we put up a website and see the little brides. We decided we would do a wedding every year for seven years. Oh no, we're having some tech problems here. Uh, our slides aren't advancing. So you're just going to have to escape and then go to the next okay. one. I think we have to stop the screen share again. I, I'm really sorry about this. What Worked yesterday perfectly, right? <laughs> it might be the Facebook aspect, um, Facebook Zooming. So um, are we just no, going to show the... Okay. So we're going to have to do this slide by slide, I think. So anyhow, so the first year was the red year. And we were doing the seven colors of the seven chakras. And so we began with the red year. And um, that was the first chakra, the red chakra. And we did a, a public performance where we invited friends and colleagues and family and sex workers and all our different communities to 
come uh, celebrate love and we asked for no material gifts, but we invited people to help co-create the wedding. And it was a really fun, fun event and everyone felt so much love for each other. And when we got to the fourth year, it was the green year, we had um, married our community in the orange year and uh, we had done a legal wedding in Canada and the green year we thought, well, let's stop being making weddings just about us. And we would make weddings about marrying the earth because we felt that the earth really needed the protections and the love and, and the, the, you know, the legal protections of marriage that marriage afforded. So we had a fabulous wedding at UC Santa Cruz where I, where I teach. It's in the middle of a beautiful redwood forest where the mountains meet the ocean. Um, of course, we're having terrible climate change in California right now. We're having terrible fires in these very same forests. But at that time, we, uh, it, was, it was just beautiful and peaceful and we were having rain, <laughs> which uh, we're not having so much of right now. But it, it was, it really, this was the moment when we realized that after have, taking these vows to, to the earth, that we were different. We had been changed. And this was the moment when we, we started the ecosexual movement. And that wedding was uh, facilitated uh, by Guillermo Gomez Pena, the artist from uh, Mexico. And he was fantastic. And we, we everybody became like sharing, good Greg. friends. Sure. Are we sharing our screen with everyone? No. Okay, so you can see the green wedding slide. And Beth, I, I could share the, the screen with you with your presentation if you would like that. That I would, would like be that. That would be much better. Ours is not working. Yeah, that would be really great. I think with Facebook, uh, it, you know, we tested it yesterday. Um, I, I don't think you're seeing all our photos. Don't close it. No? Okay. Don't. Yeah. Okay. This is great. So let's go. So this is the red wedding. Let's go to the next slide, please. Here we can go. So this is the green wedding that we're, um, we were just talking about. And um, uh, 150 people helped create that wedding. And about 400 people came to it. So these are these large scale performance art pieces, really. And they were very, um, they became, you know, quite popular in a certain way. After we did more. Next slide, please. So you might want to know what is an ecosexual? You know, an ecosexual, it can be different things. Well, when we, started using the term the day after the green wedding we said maybe we're ecosexual it had been out in the world a little bit and uh but it was very undefined so we came up with a definition and there were multiple definitions we we gave it um that it could be a person that found nature sensual or sexy it could be a new sexual identity or someone that takes the earth as their lover. It could be used as an environmental activist strategy. It certainly in retrospect became a new uh, movement and also it could be a spiritual practice. It's a kind of mindfulness practice of paying attention to the world around us beyond the human. And we invite any of you to add on or change this, this definition. This is always a work in progress. Next slide. I'll just ring the bell for the next slide. So we have our work that we've done ecosex ever since 2008 is art it's an art practice we've developed theories and it's also uh, an embodied practice and we also use it as a form of activism environmental activism in the main but also sexual activism we're trying to expand what sex and sexuality can be we're very interested in uh 
expanding the idea of what's sexy. Next slide. So we went on to do more weddings and uh, uh, Paul Preciado, who invited us to Documenta, uh, also came together with Giotta Castro and we were um, artists with the um, uh, Murcia Spain Pavilion. And at, so at the, the, Venice, at the Biennale. Venice Biennale. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm not going to uh, so we put out a call. What we do for these weddings, I'm sorry, there's a, a helicopter flying over now. <laughs> Probably the life police. In San Fr life in Los Angeles. Lots of anti-vaxxing protests going on. So anyhow, we were invited to come to the Venice Biennale. And we sent out an invitation for collaborators. And that's how these weddings work. We would always send out an invitation for people to collaborate with us. And help create the wedding and no material gifts. So people came from 19 countries for our Venice Biennale wedding to the ocean. And who doesn't love water and the ocean? And we're not the only brides. Everyone there that wants can take vows to marry the ocean or whatever. Well, we're we were doing. marrying the Adriatic Sea. And we found out that in Venice, Venice had an old tradition of the Doge, who was the mayor of Venice. Uh, being going out and proclaiming the sea as their wife and that they had dominion over the sea. So it was a very patriarchal, heteronormative, sort of sexist dominion of the sea. And we wanted to change that. We wanted to make this a mutual love where we could give to the sea and the sea could, you know, we, we were working for the benefit of the sea, really. Now we have a video which hopefully will work if you could go to the next Next to the video, you can see a bit the weddings. And do you have sound? Well, I guess the sound didn't come through, but this was a white wedding to snow in Canada in the winter. And it was in a big old church. A decommissioned um, church. Uh, yeah, decommission, and it had become an, a concert hall, and about 500 people came, and it was just so beautiful, and everybody married Snow. And people were doing performance art pieces in honor of Snow. So this is Tommy, the snowflake. Everyone threw paper snowflakes at us. And we picked up the snow, and and we played with the snow, and then... After the vows, we consummated the wedding with icicles. Uh, Beth insert, we inserted icicles. <laughs> that that sounds a little more abstract than we usually it usually sounds, but. <laughs> Quite yeah, I think we can stop and stop this because it's yep. already tense. This was our wedding to the cold. <laughs> so we married the cold and the I think we can go up to the next slide now. Uh, Next slide. Okay, great. So anyhow, you can all see these uh, these videos on our website. Which are good quality. Yeah, and the they, sound is much better. They too. aren't working today somehow. Yeah. But um, if you go to Sprinkle Stevens, if someone could type that in the chat, sprinklestevens.org. Like orgasm? Yeah, with a P-H, sprinklestevens.org. Uh, if you go to the movie section, you can watch that uh, a 10 minute video of our wedding documentation. It's really fun and beautiful. And um, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> so really quickly, um, we made some charts and graphs. If you could go back one. Yeah. Um, there we go. Of how are my sexology uh, the Kinsey scale came to mind and Beth and I, uh, which was 
Alfred Kinsey made this chart, how gay to straight you are. We made a chart, an homage, how ecosexual you are. And so a number, a zero would be, you know, not ecosexual at all. Really just, you're not into this. You think this is crazy. You're not into it. But then it progresses, you know, to one where you're a little ecosensual or you're ecosensual only. And then it goes up to six where you're extremely ecosexual, ecosexual, sorry. And um, this, we're, Annie and I are probably sevens now <laughs> because we really are into this ecosexual thing and we, we love it. And we're always thinking of new ways to, uh, to practice and apply it. Um, and by the way, you don't have to give up anything. Um, just imagining the earth as your lover and partner is all it takes or loving the earth is all it takes to be good sexual and you can still be straight gay asexual bisexual whatever else you want yeah we think of it as an ecosystem for sexuality next slide please i'm excited and these are, yeah no, these are ahead. some of our fetish this is a fetish chart and we've broken this into four different categories for aquaphilia for water terophilia for earth pyrophilia for fire and aerophilia for air so nature fetishes we're gonna uh perform some here in the garden and just a just a, a little a little while um but um anything can be sensual erotic out in the world and for instance sunbathing is a form of pyrophilia or just you know what we're doing now allowing the sun to penetrate our skin is a is a form of pyrophilia or it's really a practice of eroticizing everything from the air you're breathing penetrating your lungs to you know the biome cloud our bacteria interacting with each other or going skinny dipping in some of those beautiful rivers in austria yeah we've been to austria quite a few times and we hope to come back one day next slide please we tend to think of the earth as being all genders many traditions and many cultures think of the earth as as female uh, but we think the earth might even be transsexual all genders or beyond genders so to us um yeah we we imagine the earth as trans and but still it can morph and go back and forth to any gender next slide well this is this is a slide for a trailer for a film but i don't think we should play this right now our first film that we made together was about mountaintop removal so um, you all can look that up at Kino Lorber. Um, this film's available on Kino Lorber or YouTube. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, that's the film. We'll skip back by that since the films aren't looking so good. Oh, how about next slide? I think I did it enough. It's kind of jerky and the sound's not so good. So we also we also present no. academic uh, events. Uh, that we call symposiums and these symposiums bring together great scholars that are working in the field uh, of transhumanism ecofeminism uh, new materialism people like donna haraway have presented in these films we try to be very diverse so uh, we try to mix uh, you know people from different backgrounds uh, different cultural beliefs and uh, we've had some really amazing, wonderful uh, symposiums. These are two posters from UC Santa Cruz, where I work with amazing colleagues. I've actually heard. Yeah, someone I've talking. Heard him talk about this before. It's not interesting. Have you heard us talk about the symposiums before? Well, um, yeah, we like our symposiums. Let's go, next. Let's go to the next slide. So this is where we do our research. I think um, they are fun when you're there. If you were at Earthy Echo Sex Boot Camp, it was really fun. They all had a lot of fun, I assure you. Oh, good. Yeah. They do stuff. They, do stuff. they, they are stuff. having serious fun. <laughs> yeah, we try to uh, make environmentalism sexy and fun uh, and diverse. I mean, part of what we're working uh, with are, are people who 
Yeah, we're working with they talk about it. Right. Especially yeah. with the technical difficulties. Are there technical difficulties right now? <laughs> we we can't really hear we can only very, hear one person whoever's, speaking. Yeah. Whoever's commenting, we can't really hear very well. Um Sorry, but we're almost done with this part. Yeah. Let's keep going. But what we're trying to do is make the environmental movement a little more sexy, fun, and diverse. Because um, in the United States, the environmental movement, well, all over the world, I think, is very serious. And um, it, it, it's hard to maintain a movement when you're, um, you know, when you're angry and serious all the time. And I think that those feelings are very valid, but there has to be some balance to that. And we practice strategies of joy to try to keep people engaged. Uh, next slide. Next slide. I think some people on the Zoom might need to mute for better sound. They had you doing this one already against gravity like that. So anyhow, we um, have done workshops also in addition to our symposiums, and these are slightly more embodied, although people do very. beautiful performances at the symposiums. They're too. very totally embodied. Yeah. We get, uh, you know, we ha use performance and explore eco-sexual practices by presenting performances for each other or actions. So this was a particularly fun workshop we did in Spain because in Spain, clothing is optional. And so we were able to go to this beach outside of Barcelona and just, you know, really play in the ocean naked. I mean, it was really fun and, and kind of uh, super embodied. Next slide, please. This is our 25 ways to make love to the earth, which is what we do. Um, and we'll just uh, share it with you. It's kind of a, a poem. And then we can actually go out and show the you 20, 25 ways to make love to the earth. Number one, tell the earth I love you and I can't live without you. Two, you might be a little embarrassed to be lovers with the earth. Relax, let that go. Three, spend time with her. Ask the earth what he wants needs and try to give it to him admire their views often circulate erotic energy with him smell her taste her massage the earth with your feet i skipped one accidentally hug and stroke his trees touch her all over talk dirty to her plants swim naked in their waters Lay on top of her or let her get on top of you. And then do a nude dance for him. Kiss, uh, sing to her. Kiss and lick her. Bury parts of your body deep inside her, his soil. And then plant your seeds in him. Love her unconditionally, even when she's angry or cruel. And the earth is a cruel mistress, and, and there is no, no safe word. word. Please keep them clean. Recycle. Work for peace. Bombs really fucking hurt. And if you see her being abused, raped, or exploited, protect her as best you can. Protect the earth's mountains, waters, and skies. Bow. To, to love, love honor, honor, and cherish the earth until, until death brings us closer together forever. So I think we're going to stop the screen share right now. Yeah, can we stop the screen share? And then we're just going to do some... Uh, Actually, maybe we should continue the screen share, then go do that, and then do the vows. Okay. Okay, let's finish <laughs> the slides, because we only have like 15 more times. Okay. Okay. Let's continue the screen share. We'll just go through, I think there's five or six more, and then we'll go demonstrate some of our practices. Yeah, one of the practices of ecosexuals is that we can change our mind freely. Yes, yeah, sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> we, we go with the flow. Let's right. just finish the slides. Oh, perfect. Uh, this was documented 14, which is a, a very beautiful five year, once every five years exhibition. 
And it was a great honor to be documenta artist. And you can see our 25 ways on, you know, we showed a lot of ephemera at the Neu, Neu, Neu Gallery in, uh, in um, Kassel, Germany. Next. We also, in Athens, we did a piece that we call Cuddle. And this was an older piece that we brought back for the uh, documenta in Athens. And we cuddle anyone. We'll cuddle anyone for seven minutes. And so this was really a piece to... Uh, it was a piece that stood in opposition to uh, the kind of um, uh, migration bans that are borders. happening all over. Yeah, borders and, 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 you know, keeping people out, right? We will cuddle anyone. And we did an that artwork. for several days in the lobby. Next. <laughs> you can watch my finger. <laughs> so we here we are doing an eco-sexual walking tour. We're back in, in Castle again. And they're, you know, these were rather large, uh, large walking tours through uh, through Castle. We started, you know, at, at the main document of the uh, pavilion, and then we walked through this uh, through the gardens that that um, where um, a lot of pieces at Documenta took place. But it was also where a lot of the rubble from the bombing of Castle. Uh, had been turned into a garden. So it was, you know, and we From talked the Nazi, about these specific, yeah, we talked about these specific, um, you know, things that were around. Next. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and this was, uh, this was another piece that we did at Documenta called the Free Sidewalk Sex Clinic. And we had people there from how many different countries? There were 13 sex experts offering sex advice. Most all of them were sex workers. Some were academics. And some were artists. And we, we had a menu of what people could ask about, but they could ask about anything. And it was in three languages. And we had uh, sex educators from many countries that spoke many languages and several hundred people came and got free sex advice. Next. And this is a poster for our film Water Makes Us Wet, which you can view on sprinklestevens.org for free until the end of this month. And so you can watch this film and, um, you know, see what you think. We, we always are up for feedback. You can always email us and uh, you know, dis to discuss the film. But it's really about, this was a road trip around California uh, to look at the water, the water situation around California. And wa water is a big issue in California. Right now we're running out of water. And it might, it might be hard for you to imagine over, over in Austria where you're getting a lot of rain, but we're in pretty serious uh, condition here because with no water, no rain, we're having terrible forest fires. And so we're really in the middle of, of a kind of uh, apocalyptic climate change scenario, which makes it really hard to talk about these things with love and humor because there's so much fear and anger uh, around that, uh, um, you know, you, you have to wonder how do you keep people engaged and how do you keep people in love with the earth? That's really our question. So please uh, go to our homepage at sprinklestevens.org and get the link there. Share it with people. It's a feature film. It's a big love homage to water. Okay, next slide, please. There's just a few more. That's next. That's the trailer of All the right. film. And this is our new book. Which just came out this week. It's called Assuming the Ecosexual Position, published by University of Minnesota Press. And it documents our love story, our inspirations, all our research. There's a lot of writing that we've done in this book that uh, people really haven't seen or heard. So we're really excited. And if you go to University of Minnesota Press, you can order a copy. And we hope people will enjoy it. Yeah. Next slide, I think is the last one. Um, these are the vows for marrying the earth, which you can um glance at but we'll repeat them we'll do them um uh with our little wedding ceremony we're going to do in just a few minutes so uh it's really decide if you want to make the vows which are just really about um marrying 
about loving Ma the earth. Loving the earth. Making, basically, it's we promise to love you until death brings us closer together forever. We are married to you, earth, through this dirt we will become. So, um, if you think you can make one vow today of any kind to love the earth in some way, uh, we're going to do that. So, we can stop the screen share. And we're going to play around in the yard a little bit. And I need lipstick. Okay. you uh, got to get dressed up for the earth. I hope you can hear us. Is anybody there? <laughs> oh, I see Jax is there. Hi, Jax. <laughs> okay. Can you all hear us? <laughs> Can we get a sign? Okay, super. Thanks. There's a thumbs up. Okay, okay great. Okay, we're going to go out. Super. Here we go. Yard, um, and connect. Maybe you, you go can. Go that way. I'll meet you. Okay. okay. Maybe you can connect with the sky or touch a plant. Um, we're going to go over here to one of our favorite trees. And uh, honey, do you want to hug this tree? Yeah. Here, so here we are. Come on in, honey. Here we are at one of our favorite trees now. You know, you want to caress a tree and kind of mm, Ask give it tree. a little kiss, you know. Ask the tree mm. what it wants. Hi, little tree. Ask this the is tree. a very sexy little tree here. We've actually <laughs> we've done, been photographed we've been with, with this, this tree. tree before. Look how erotic yeah. that part is. Yeah, do you see the crotch of the tree? They don't call them crotches for nothing. And, um, oh, here, look. Here's one. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice little Can you little see that one right with here. the little, it's got a uh -huh. little pubic uh -huh. hair. We're getting our uh -huh. eco-sexual like gaze on. Yeah, you have to go into like a sort of uh, eco-sexual mindset to really kind of get into this. Mm. Hi, tree. Yeah. Oh. So, and we do, you know, people sometimes ask, how do you know if the tree gives you consent? Well, we can't really tell if the tree is saying, yes, yes, more, more, please give it to me more. But we can co sense. I mean, right now there are no branches falling on our heads. The tree is alive and it seems quite happy. Boy, it smells good. It, this tree smells really good. Doesn't it? Oh, Annie's doing an event. You can feel the tree on your tongue. I'm getting, it's nice to close your eyes and get mm. a message. Yeah, you and can listen. There was a tree that David, my brother, had to take out of the yard, and I'm feeling the pain. I'm feeling that this tree misses that other tree that we've loved over the years. It was a beautiful orange tree. That's right. But, people, but we, we try to co-sense with these, with these entities. And we've spoken to a lot of people like, how do you know if a, if a nature entity wants people around or not? And these aren't even questions that get asked if foresters are foresting a tree, cutting down trees. But if you hug a tree, people all of a sudden are like, how do you know if that tree can sense? So these are questions that are just swirling in the air about ecosexuality. So being erotic in nature is a taboo, of course. Oh, here's some. Is a taboo. So like if the neighbors see us hugging and kissing and licking the tree. They might call the police. <laughs> whereas you can kill the tree and no one cares. People just call that gardening. And like killing trees is okay. Here's, honey, go ahead and put your fist down. So here's a beautiful, beautiful fountain in the backyard here. And we love playing with water. Water does make us wet in all senses of the word. Yeah. This water's flowing and it feels so good right now because it's so hot down here in LA. Honey, do you want to play with who the water hasn't, a bit? Who hasn't straddled the hot tub jets? And there's a little rock over here I would like to introduce you all to. This is my E spot. Oh, there's a pretty flower. A beautiful flower. It smells. Yeah. Come here, honey. Does it smell? Oh, it does. Now, when you're smelling a flower, you know you're putting your nose right into the genitalia of the plant. The reproductive organs. 
Yeah, it does smell very oh, nice. It smells mm. very good. Can you smell it? Can you all smell this? Anyone can smell this? It's quite nice. Here's my E spot, honey. Show me your E spot. Oh my God, it's got a piece of lemon on it. Oh, wow. This is an orange tree. Can you see some of the There's oranges? There's oranges exploding. Let's call that a tree gasm. Mm -hmm. And this is a beautiful so rock. A rock. This is a beautiful rock that we love to caress. And I don't know, maybe the orange, <laughs> maybe a bird left that. So we're caressing this rock. And sometimes, you know, we can even include our human with the more than human partners because because we're human and we're made of stardust and iron and calcium and all the things that all of these beautiful elements are made of. We're all stardust. Do we're all calcium. Demo some grasslinger. No, because the dog just put <laughs> there this morning. <laughs> you have to be oh. careful. You know, ecosexuality can be dangerous. <laughs> oh, let's get in the shade here. Yeah, we took the dogs out this morning. You have you don't really want to do grasslingus where the dogs have peed. So the wedding bells, let's put on our, we're going to we're, have we're a just going to have a change. quick change here. So while we're putting on our power, our uh, wedding outfits, our efficient outfits, think about what you love with the earth. What do you love about the earth? And here's our power necklaces. Yeah, either Thank one. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Um, as we get ready, I hear the wedding bells ringing. What about your lover, the earth? I'm gonna get the clipboard. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. Shakes it out. So we like to we like to call in the spirit of the earth. So we like do some rattles sometimes, you know? And, uh, oh, the dogs are very interested in what's going on. Come on, Jason. And we're gonna do a little tarot card reading just to check in and see how things are going in the tarot world. Uh, this is a little marriage counseling. Uh, so if you, someone, everyone there, just think of a question. And we're gonna pick one card. And maybe this will answer your question. <laughs> Should I pick it? Or yeah. Pick it? Okay. Oh, wow. Ah, we got reward. And so that's uh, about the world. The rewards of loving the earth, not making money off her back, his back, their back. But it's really about being in harmony and trying to live with the material world. Caring about the earth will benefit us. In fact, a lot of the viruses that are putting a damper on our fun these days are caused by destroying the ecosystem. That's right. Okay, so, so are you ready? Um, Is see, everyone ready to take vows to the earth? Should we get some thumbs up or some thumbs down? <laughs> if you have access to the chat, go ahead and put what you love about the earth and what you want to make a vow to. We are gathered here today to love the earth more. To make vows, to love, honor, and cherish the earth. And we're here to support you in that journey of taking the earth as your partner today. Uh, think about, is there one thing you can do, like use less plastic or something, you know, use less water, go to a protest, whatever. Um, put it in the chat if you have access. Yeah. Does anybody object? to this wedding between people here on Zoom and on Facebook and- People in Salzburg. To marrying the earth today, anybody object? Do we have any objectors? You can speak now or forever hold your peace. I guess it's hard to- 
Well, I object on the grounds that, um, you know, we, there's a lot not to like about weddings and marriage. It's kind of a old fashioned patriarchal idea to own a person or whatever, but that's not what this is about. This is different because people are part of the earth as well. All sex is eco-sex. And we just really want to, to voice that we want to love, honor, and cherish the earth until death brings us closer together forever. So, so how will you love the earth through your senses? Smelling, touching, tasting, listening, paying attention to what the earth is trying to say. If you're ready to make this commitment to marry the earth today, say, say I, I do. do. And the vows are. No, that's it. Oh, okay. Does everyone say I do? Just I put it. I don't. Was there an I don't? <laughs> Why? Yeah, you can object and, and not do it. Just be a witness or create a protest. Um, paying wow. attention through the senses. I like that. Oh, great. People are, people are making their vows. This is nice. What's your commitment? What's your vow? Um, maybe, uh, at well, least give a moment of gratitude for the earth. And we, and we vow, we're going to just repeat ours. We vow to love, honor, honor and, and cherish the earth until death brings us closer together forever. Yeah. So in the power vested in ourselves, we, we now pronounce you married to the earth. earth. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. So, congratulations to those we hope of it's you. a long, fruitful marriage. We, to those of you that took the vows today, we wish you eternal happiness and and gratitude to the earth and love the earth and congratulations. And become good compost. It'll be a relationship like no other. That's right. And your love will grow and grow and grow. Dun 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 dun. Oh, we're gonna go celebrate. Dun 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 and we want to make a little toast. Uh, it is uh, some nice champagne. Yep. Where's this from? This is from nature, brute nature. This is from, from brute nature. Brute, brute nature. Yeah. It says brute nature. Oh, the lighting's terrible. It really here. does. <laughs> the so, sun's playing with us today. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So great. Okay. So we're going to drink a toast to you. And then if we have any questions or time for chatting, we're happy to do that. We're drinking a toast to you there in Austria and around the world. And we're drinking a big toast to the earth, to the earth, to the earth and to your, to you who are the earth. Yes, we are the earth. Mm. Oh, fantastic. All right, everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you so much for playing with us today and or at least listening. Um, we know eco-sex isn't for everybody, but um, we welcome you. We have email addresses uh, that we'll hopefully put in the chat. And uh, I guess I wish we could all chat and talk to each other. I wish other. we were all in person because Zoom is uh, 
Strange. Yeah. Zoom's very strange. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, next year. Next year, next year. And cheers. Watch. Cheers to the Institute and cheers to uh, everyone there who's uh, made this possible. Yeah, thank you, Sophie and Marina. Yeah, and thank you so people. much. There's two apples for you. Yay. Thank and you. So, yeah. Now, do you have your eco sexual gaze on? Yep. Go out and find your e spots, your eco sexy spots. Go hug a tree. Let's take a bite. All right. Did you hear the bell? Tachi, the church is ringing. The church bells are ringing. Oh, mm. great! Yay! So it's it's legit. <laughs> and uh, put a ring on your finger or a string on your wrist or some, or some masking tape. <laughs> masking tape on your finger your wedding finger and that ring will help you to remember your vows or it could be a special necklace whatever you want to symbolize your wedding rings or take your shoes off and walk barefoot on the earth that's one of the best ecosexual practices just walking barefoot so this will suffice for our cake and hopefully you can get some cake and champagne and celebrate your your wedding today congratulations Woohoo! yeah Woo <laughs> we love you thank you thank you bye bye. bye bye thank you thank you for the chat of things in the chat we'll Take be care. seeing you again we'll be seeing you again soon and you can always email us Bye. We're easy to find. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Annie Sprinkle at me.com. Beth Stevens at me.com. Oh, Beth and Annie at Sex Ecology. Oh, but I don't know that. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, well, next year or after that, you have to do one more wedding. We're going to... Um... You know, Wait, in what? the grounds of on the grounds of Salzburg. Oh yeah, that would be wonderful. Oh yeah, with all the students uh, creating the wedding. Oh my God, that'd be fabulous. Yeah, and it's so beautiful there. We've both been to Salzburg. It's so beautiful. Well, have a wonderful rest of the day. Take care. Bye bye. Thank Down. you. Here's my ring. <laughs> Bye.